Hello, everyone. This is Quan Wang from Google. Today, I'm going to talk about personal VAD, also known as speaker conditioned voice activity detection. A big part of this work is done by Xiao Jinding, who was my intern last summer. First of all, a high level summary of this work. Personal VAD is a system to detect the voice activity of a target speaker. The reason we need a personal VAD is that it reduces CPU, memory, and battery consumption for on device speech recognition. We implement personal VAD as a frame level streaming detection system, which uses target speaker embedding as side input. I will start by giving some background. Most of the speech recognition systems are deployed on the cloud. But moving ASR to the device side is the current trend. This is because on device ASR does not require internet connection. It greatly reduces the latency because it does not need to communicate with servers. It also preserves the user's privacy better because the audio never leaves your device. On device ASR is usually used for smartphones or smart home speakers. For example, if you simply want to turn on the flashlight on your phone, you should be able to do it even in airplane mode. If you want to turn on bedroom lights, you should only need access to your local network. Although on device ASR is great, there are lots of challenges. Unlike servers, we only have a very limited budget of CPU, memory, and battery for ASR. Also, ASR is not the only program running on the device. For example, for smartphones, there are also many other apps running in the background. So an important question is, when do we run ASR on the device? Apparently, it shouldn't be always running. A typical solution is to use keyword detection, also known as weak word detection or hot word detection. For example, hey Google is the keyword for Google devices. Because the keyword detection model is usually very small, so it's very cheap and it can be always running. ASR is usually a big model. Running ASR is very expensive. So we only run it when the keyword is detected. However, not everyone likes the idea of always having to speak the keyword before you can interact with the device. Many people wish to be able to directly talk to the device without having to say a keyword that we define for them. So an alternative solution is to use voice activity detection instead of keyword detection. Like keyword detection models, VAD models are also very small and very cheap to run. So you can have the VAD model always running and only use ASR when VAD has been triggered. So how does VAD work? The VAD model is typically a frame-level binary classifier. For every frame of speech signals, VAD classifies it into two categories, speech and non-speech. And after VAD, we filter out all the non-speech frames and only keep the speech frames. Then we feed these speech frames to downstream components, like ASR or speaker recognition. The recognition results will be used for natural language processing, then trigger different actions. The VAD model will help us to reject all the non-speech frames, which will save lots of computational resources. But is it good enough? In a realistic scenario, you can talk to the device, but your kid can also talk to you, and if you are in the living room, there could be someone talking in the TV ads. These are all valid speech signals, so VAD will simply accept all these frames. But ASR shouldn't run on all of them. For example, if you keep the TV playing and the ASR keeps running on the smartphone, you will soon run out of battery. So that's why we are introducing personal VAD. Personal VAD is similar to standard VAD. It is a frame-level classifier. But the difference is that it has three categories instead of two. We still have the non-speech class, but the other two are target speaker speech and non-target speaker speech. Anything that is not spoken by the target speaker, like other family members or TV, will be considered non-target speaker speech. The benefits of using personal VAD is that we will only run ASR on target speaker speech. This means we will save lots of computational resources when TV is on, when there are multiple family members in the user's household, or when the user is at a party. And to make this true, the key is that the personal VAD model needs to be tidy and fast, just like a keyword detection or standard VAD model. Also, the fourth reject must be no, 
because we want to be responsive to the target user's request. The fourth accept should also be no to really save the computational resources. When we first released this paper, there are some comments saying, oh, this is nothing new, this is just a speaker recognition or speaker derivation. Here we want to clarify that, no, this is not. Personal VAD is very different from speaker recognition or speaker derivation. Speaker recognition models usually produce recognition results at utterance level or window level, but personal VAD produces output at frame level. It is a streaming model and very sensitive to latency. Speaker recognition models are typically big, usually at least more than 5 million parameters. Personal VAD is an always running model. It must be very small, typically less than 200,000 parameters. Speaker derivation needs to cluster unknown speakers, and the number of speakers is very important. Personal VAD only cares about the target speaker. Everyone else will be simply represented as non-target speaker. Next, I will talk about the implementation of personal VAD. To implement personal VAD, the first question is, how do we know whom to listen to? Modern speech systems usually allow the user to enroll their voice, and this enrollment is a one-off experience, so the cost can be ignored at runtime. After enrollment, we will have a speaker embedding, also known as a D vector, stored on the device. This embedding can be used for speaker recognition or voice filtering, so naturally, it can also be used as the side input of personal VAD. There are different ways of implementing personal VAD. The simplest way is to directly combine a standard VAD model and a speaker verification system. We use this as a baseline. But in this paper, we propose to train a new personal VAD model, which takes the speaker verification score or the speaker embedding as input. So actually we implemented four different architectures for personal VAD. I'm going to talk about them one by one. First, score combination. This is the baseline model that I mentioned earlier. We don't train any new model, but just use the existing VAD model and the speaker verification model. If the VAD output is speech, we verify this frame against the target speaker using the speaker verification model, such that we have three different output classes like personal VAD. Note that this implementation requires running the big speaker verification model at the runtime, so it's an expensive solution. Second one, score conditioned training. Here we don't use the standard VAD model, but still use the speaker verification model. We concatenate the speaker verification score with the acoustic features and train a new personal VAD model on top of the concatenated features. This is still very expensive because we need to run the speaker verification model at runtime. Next, embedding condition training. This is really the implementation that we want to use for on-device ASR. It directly concatenates the target speaker embedding with acoustic features, and we train a new personal VAD model on the concatenated features. So the personal VAD model is the only model that we need for the runtime. And finally, score and embedding condition training. It concatenates both speaker verification score and embedding with the acoustic features. So it uses the most information from the speaker verification system and is supposed to be most powerful. But since it requires running speaker verification at runtime, so it's still not ideal for on-device ASR. Okay, we have talked about architectures. Let's talk about the NOS function. VAD is a classification problem, so standard VAD uses binary cross entropy. Personal VAD has three classes, so naturally, we can use ternary cross entropy. But can we do better than cross entropy? If you think about the actual use case, both non-speech and non-target speaker speech will be discarded by ASR. So if you make a prediction error between non-speech and non-target speaker speech, it's actually not a big deal. We can include this knowledge in our loss function. And we proposed the weighted pairwise loss. It is similar to cross entropy, but we use a different weight for different pairs of classes. For example, we use a smaller weight of 0.1 between the classes non-speech and non-target speaker speech, and use a larger weight of 1 between other pairs. Next. I will talk about experiment setup. 
an ideal dataset for training and evaluating personal VAD would have these features. It should include realistic and natural speaker turns. It should cover diverse noise conditions. It should have frame-level speaker labels, and it should have enrollment utterances for each target speaker. Unfortunately, we can't find a dataset that satisfies all these requirements. So we actually made an artificial dataset based on the well-known LibreSpeech dataset. Remember that we need the frame-level speaker labels. For each LibreSpeech utterance, we have the speaker label. We also have the ground truth ASR transcript. So we use a pre-trained ASR model to force align the ground truth transcript with the audio to get the timing of each word. With this timing information, we get the frame-level speaker labels. And to have conversational speech, we concatenate utterances from different speakers. We also use a room simulator to add reverberant noise to the concatenated utterance. This will avoid domain overfitting and also mitigate concatenation artifacts. Here's the model configuration. Both standard VAD and personal VAD consist of two LSTM layers and one fully collected layer. The model has 0.13 million parameters in total. The speaker verification model has three LSTM layers with projection and one fully collected layer. This model is pretty big with about 5 million parameters. For evaluation, because this is a classification problem, so we use average precision. We look at average precision for each class and also the mean average precision. We also look at the metrics for both with and without multi-style training noises. Next, results and conclusions. First, we compare different architectures. Remember that uh, SC is the baseline by directly combining standard VAD and the speaker verification. And we find that all the other personal VAD models are better than the baseline. Among the proposed models, SET, which is the one that uses both speaker verification score and speaker embedding, is the best. This is kind of expected because it uses most speaker information. ET is the personal VAD model that only uses speaker embedding and is ideal for on-device ASR. We note that ET is slightly worse than SET, but the difference is small. It is near optimal but has only 2.6% of the parameters at runtime. We also compare the conventional cross entropy noise and the proposed weighted pairwise noise. We found that weighted pairwise noise is consistently better than cross entropy, and the optimal weight between non speech and non target speaker speech is 0.1. Finally, since the ultimate goal of personal VAD is to replace the standard VAD, so we compare the two on a standard VAD task. In some cases, Personal VAD is slightly worse, but the differences are quite small. So, conclusions of this paper. The proposed personal VAD architectures outperform the baseline of directly combining VAD and speaker verification. Among the proposed architectures, SET has the best performance, but ET is the ideal one for on-device ASR, which has near-optimal performance. We also proposed weighted pairwise NOS which outperforms cross-entropy noise. Finally, personal VAD and standard VAD perform almost equally well on standard VAD tasks. I will also briefly talk about future work directions. Currently, the personal VAD model is trained and evaluated on artificial conversations. We should really use realistic conversational speech. This will require lots of data collection and enabling efforts. Besides, Personal VAD can be used for speaker diarization realization, especially when there is overlapped speech in the conversation. And the good news is that people are already doing it. Researchers from Russia proposed this system known as target speaker VAD, which is similar to personal VAD, and successfully used it for speaker diarization If you like our paper, I will recommend you to read their paper as well. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on the Speaker Odyssey 2020 website and our paper. Thank you.